Greetings American voters. We are anonymous. The ultimate tragedy of capitalism and our time is that it has achieved dominance without being connected to any other measure for human progress. Progress is determined only by growth and profit. Profit is the measure by which the health of society is measured. That becomes a nasty, poor, brutish, and never-ending political competition. The battle of wants operates on a number of different levels in three interrelated ways. First, it intensifies the struggle for status, access, and other privileges. Second, it intensifies pride. Third, it intensifies envy. Spurred by the triple experience, the elite creates an ever more exclusive set of institutions and relationships. It manufactures an ever more complex and artificial means of winning than profiting. And, it builds mechanisms that can contribute to its senses of inadequacy, including moral and spiritual insufficiency, without requiring a transformative corrective to the restraint of selfish competition. Capitalism expects to do whatever it takes to succeed, and if that means bribery, it will happily bribe. It is the government's responsibility to keep business and industry honest. It has failed in that duty. That failure is primarily because politicians have become embedded with lobbyists in all directions. As soon as a politician gets elected, they launch a re-election fund that makes them be beholden to special interests. The courts have failed to keep government honest because political bribery is legal. It is legal for anyone and everyone to contribute to political campaigns. The bribes don't formally go to politicians, but to their campaign chests. And this can be done anonymously. In a little more than a decade, the stock market has crashed twice. Americans lost $5 trillion in the 2000.com bust and more than $7 trillion in the 2007 housing crash. After completely recovering since the peak in 2007, stock indexes keep reaching record highs. Sooner or later, stimulated by the Federal Reserve with phony money rather than real economic gains, this latest Wall Street bubble will burst. The Federal Reserve has kept expanding their balance sheet literally by several trillion dollars. But, at the same time, the economic output has grown at less than 2% a year. Real business investment crawls forward at a snail's pace. And the payroll job count keeps creeping, with new jobs primarily at low wage levels. So, the Main Street economy is faltering, while Washington is accumulating a soaring debt burden on posterity, unable to rein in either the warfare state, or the welfare state, or raise the taxes needed to pay the nation's bills. By default, the Fed has resorted to a radical, unexplored spree of money printing. But, the flood of liquidity, instead of telling banks to lend and corporations to spend, has stayed trapped in the canyons of Wall Street, where it is inflating yet another unsustainable bubble. When this bubble bursts, there cannot be a new round of bailouts like the banks got in 2008. Instead, America will descend into an era of zero-sum austerity and virulent political conflict, extinguishing even today's feeble remnants of economic growth. The decades-old ideas of capitalism making America the land of opportunity makes people blind to the creeping corruption of the system. Middle America, busy with the day-to-day -day business of making a living, remains oblivious about what's occurring around them. Over the past few years, particularly since the bursting of the housing bubble, there have been increasing calls for middle-class Americans to scale down from their private homes. Americans would be better off not buying homes and living smaller for the sake of their own economic situations. The long-standing American ideal was, if you work hard, anything is possible. But today, the opportunity for social advancement feels increasingly out of reach for more and more people, and for their children. It requires a shift in priorities. It is not enough merely to blame the so-called 1%, but to shift the benefits of growth away from the current narrow finance and by tech sectors, and more towards a broad array of productive enterprise. If America really wants to confront its growing class divide, it needs to start broad-based economic growth, rather than simply feathering the nests of the already rich, privileged and well-connected. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are both financially and legally bound to this capitalistic system. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are both players in this so-called free market. They do not represent the average citizen. They only represent the 1%. They are the 1%.
we have anonymous ask you, the voter, to make a moral choice when voting to elect our next president. We ask all of you, to consider an alternative to this capitalistic system we all suffer with today. Like an alternative to capitalism, Bernie Sanders is that alternative choice in this election. We are the 99%. Bernie Sanders supports the 99%, and we of Anonymous support Bernie Sanders. We need to rise up. We need to make our voices and vote count. This is our last chance to make a positive political statement to the elite by voting to elect a true, people's president. Don't let this opportunity slip through your fingers. Spread support for Bernie Sanders wherever you can. We ask you to re-upload this video and get the word out. We are anonymous. We are legion. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, get ready to feel the burn. Expect us.